monsters, demons, ghosts. These are the things that keep most kids up at night. But when I was a kid, I was always more worried about the sun exploding. Because a monster you can run away from. A demon you can call a priest or pray to a guardian angel. And ghosts, well, I ain't afraid of no ghost. But the sun exploding? You ain't surviving that. And the thing about the sun exploding is, it's gonna happen. We know this. It's a real thing. Those other things, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. But the sun will explode. We know this. It is an existential threat to our species. Granted, they say it's not supposed to happen for billions and billions of years, but what if they're wrong? Or what if they know it could happen at any minute, but they're not telling us because they know it would cause mass panic? This is my eight-year-old self talking. I got over that fear eventually, but it is hard to imagine something scarier than an event that would literally wipe out our entire planet and everything on it. Until scientists imagined it. Crazy Minion asks, can you do a video on vacuum decay? Try to imagine that somewhere out there in the universe a tiny subatomic bubble forms. And inside of this bubble, all physics as we know it ceases to exist. Particles don't form into atoms anymore, atoms don't form into molecules, and the fundamental forces as we know it have no meaning anymore. And then imagine that bubble expands outwards at the speed of light, just obliterating everything it touches. Comets, planets, solar systems, entire galaxies, their constituent particles just flung out like ashes in the wind until the entire universe ceases to exist. This is a real thing that could happen. In fact, for all we know, it's already happened out there in the universe and we would have no way of knowing it because it travels at the speed of light. The first thing that we would know about its existence would be our atoms just flying apart in all directions at the same time. Just complete and utter nothingness, blackness, existence, coming to an end. Hello darkness, my old friend. This is vacuum decay. And to understand how this would happen, there's a few core concepts we need to wrap our heads around. The first is the standard model of particle physics. I did a whole video on the standard model a while back. I'll point to you right here for all the details. But the overall gist is that all our atoms are made up of fundamental particles that fall into three different categories, quarks, bosons, and leptons. Leptons are electrons and neutrinos in their various flavors. Quarks are the things that make up the nucleus of the atom, the protons and the neutrons. And the bosons are the force carrier particles that make the four fundamental forces possible. But the final piece of the standard model that we know of so far anyway was the Higgs boson. The Higgs was also called the God particle because it assigns mass to all the other particles. Each particle in the standard model has a specific mass and that mass dictates how they interact with the other particles forming atoms and molecules and everything that we know of. Without the Higgs mechanism none of that would be possible. All these particles would just fly around and not interact with each other at all. That's how it got its name, the God particle. The Higgs was predicted to have a mass of 126 GeV, and they found this at CERN by smashing protons together over and over again, and over aggregate time, they were able to find a spike in their charts at exactly that mass, thus proving the existence of the Higgs. But the Higgs boson is just a tiny chunk of the Higgs field, which brings us to the second concept that you need to understand, which is quantum field theory. So I've never really done a video on quantum field theory that's long overdue, but basically quantum field theory states that all of the particles that we know of, the fundamental particles of the standard model, are just excitations in various fields. In other words, reality as we know it is just made up of layers of fields at different energy levels. You got electron fields, you got quark fields, you got boson fields, and most importantly for this discussion, you have a Higgs field. When the Higgs field was predicted by the illustrious Peter Higgs, it was predicted at a very specific energy level. Any higher or lower in physics as we know it would cease to exist. But speaking of energy levels, the third law of thermodynamics states that all things move to their lowest energy level, also known as their ground state or true vacuum. For example, if a guy gets his head cut off at the top of a hill, that head now has a very high potential energy, and it will roll down the hill until it gets to the very bottom, at which point it will be at its ground state. This is true of human heads, fundamental particles, and yes, quantum fields. So soon after the universe formed, all of the quantum fields settled into a nice, stable ground state. All of them except the Higgs. See, 126 GeV is a really small amount of energy for us in our world, but in the quantum world, it's actually pretty high. And scientists began to wonder if this is really as low as it could go. And with a little fancy math, scientists at CERN in 2013 were able to determine that yes, there is a potential theoretical lower energy state for the Higgs, and they called it the ultra-dense Higgs field. 
That means that the Higgs field that keeps the entire universe together is not a stable true vacuum. It is a metastable false vacuum. Which means that if at any place in the universe a tiny piece of the Higgs field decided to slip down into that ultra dense state, entropy would take over and the entire Higgs field would collapse along with it. Obliterating the laws of physics as we know it and expanding out at the speed of light, forming this bubble of destruction that I was talking about earlier. The bubble of doom! But luckily the graphs show a ledge right here that's preventing the Higgs field from slipping down into the ultra dense state, so we're safe. <laughs> Wait a second, wasn't there a third concept that we needed to understand? What was that? Oh, shit. In my video on Moore's Law, I'll share that right here, I talked about how we're kind of reaching the physical limit of smallness on computer chips because below a certain scale, electrons have a tendency to just kind of jump the gap at the gate. This is called quantum tunneling. It's an interesting phenomenon, probably deserves a video all its own, but suffice to say, quantum particles have a tendency to blink in and out of existence and cross barriers that normal physical classical physics does not allow. Quantum particles give the finger to classical physics on a daily basis. So the idea is, even though the Higgs seems to be in this nice little comfortable spot, if even one Higgs boson tunneled through and slipped down into the ultra-dense Higgs field, that would create this unholy portal that the rest of the Higgs field would follow. Need I repeat what would happen? Now this is all theoretical, and it's been said that even if it could happen, it would only happen once in every like 100 trillion years. But it only has to happen once. But what if it did happen? What would become of the universe? I mean, aside from our pants ruining fear of total obliteration, what would that look like? There's a lot of questions there. Like, what would the universe be like on the other side of this bubble? Without a Higgs field, could anything exist at all? Would different kinds of matter arise? How would this affect things like dark matter, dark energy? Would space-time even be a thing? And considering the expansion of space-time, would this bubble eventually obliterate the entire universe? Or are there parts of the universe moving far enough away from it at fast enough speeds that it would never reach it, relativistically speaking? Would that make our universe sort of crescent-shaped? Is this how you get a multiverse? So many questions. On the chart of existential threats, the scale and unavoidability of vacuum decay is off the charts, but its probability is low. You're much more likely to be taken out by a gamma ray burst or the Yellowstone supervolcano. And even if you do avoid all the existential threats, you'll probably die of cancer or heart disease or old age, or maybe you'll get hit by a car tomorrow. Did you know 800 people die every year from getting tangled up in their bedsheets? And they never found the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Happy Halloween! Ladies and gentlemen, the world is a nightmare. You know what makes it better? Wearing really cool shirts. This is my favorite of the Answers with Joe shirts that we have available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. There's many more there. You can go check them out. Helps support the channel and helps support a really cool designer living in Prague named Michael. I love the guy. He's awesome stuff. And a quick shout out and thanks to all the supporters on Patreon that help make this channel possible. We have like 180 now. I can't believe this. It keeps growing and it's awesome. Thank you guys so much. I actually have some new people that just joined uh, really quickly. I want to call them out. We got Jamie Martin, Bobby Moore Jr., Bobby, uh, Alan Kruzmark, Jack Jones, Spuds McKenzie, awesome, F. Rob Dorsey, William Huan, Edward Holt, Tiago Azura, Kim, Chris Modisette, Chris Cook, and Jonathan Francisco. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Uh, if you would like to join them, get access to special perks, like my secret vlog. I just released one of them publicly the other day, so you can see what that's all about. You can join at patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. And I say this every time, if you suffer with canker sores or mouth ulcers, I have a product that I created myself called Canker Boy. It is a daily pill, a vitamin supplement that helps prevent them from forming. Works for about 75% of people. You can try it risk-free for two months at cankerboy.com. All right, like and share if you like it. And if this is your first time here, please check out some of my other videos. And if you enjoy them, I encourage you to subscribe because I just keep making these things and you can see them right when they first come out every Monday. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out, have a fun and safe Halloween and an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.